The world of Star Wars strategy has been dominated by Star Wars Empire at War for the last 14 years, along with some other mods for other games. However, today we're going to go back in time and take a look at the game that inspired Empire at War and started the whole Star Wars strategy subgenre. This game was known as Star Wars Rebellion, or in the UK, Star Wars Supremacy. I've actually covered this game a few times on the channel in playthroughs, where I've started off and then done horribly, so I'll put a link to one of those playthroughs in the description, but the footage that I'm using will also be from that, because this game, as a game from 1998, is very difficult to actually record. Somewhat like Star Wars Empire at War, Rebellion took place primarily on a galactic map, but then you could also go into space tactical battles. Unlike Empire at War, it doesn't include ground battles, but even having the two different phases was something that you didn't really see much in either other 4X strategy games or in real-time strategy games where an overworld wasn't a super common feature. Even eight years later, in 2006, when Empire at War was released, it wasn't something that you saw too much. In Rebellion, you took command of either the Galactic Empire or the Rebel Alliance in the days of the Galactic Civil War, and you explored the galaxy, attempted to recruit various heroes, built up your fleets and ground invasion forces, with the goal of either capturing the hidden rebel base, which could be on various places, or capture Coruscant as the Imperial capital. You'd also have to capture the Imperial leaders of Vader and Palpatine, or you'd have to capture Luke Skywalker or Mon Mothma as the leaders of the Rebel Alliance. This may actually be reminiscent of a much more recent game, Star Wars Rebellion the Tabletop Game, where there is similarly a hidden rebel base, you build up your fleets, and a lot of the mechanics do seem inspired by Star Wars Rebellion. The first one. In contrast to Star Wars Empire at War, where the fleet battles are kind of the main thing people go for, with ground battles being kind of secondary, and the galactic map often just being a kind of menu system to get into the battles, in Star Wars Rebellion, the battles take a back seat, and the main thing really is the galactic level, where there are a lot of different elements of research, subterfuge, and other kinds of planet management and faction management that you don't really find in Star Wars Empire at War. One of the downsides of this is that the UI for the game often feels a bit like a set of spreadsheets, which it is, and the menu system isn't super user-friendly. While a lot of the fans of the game now will point to this as simply being a symptom of its age and are willing to look past that, even at the time there was a lot of complaints about the clunkiness and the unintuitive interface. The reviews for the game ranged from some pretty decent reviews to some very bad reviews that primarily did cite this as an issue. The tactical space battles, like I said, were fairly secondary, and there were some interesting elements to them that would later come into Empire War as well. You were able to research a bunch of different ship types, with Rebellion introducing some ship types you may recognize from Empire War mods if you play those, like the Bulwark Battlecruiser, the Dauntless Cruiser, the Liberator, so mostly on the Rebel side, at a time where Rebel ship types in particular were kind of thin on the ground. It may just be a function of how new I was to the game or how unexperienced I was, but in about four hours of playing the game, I've only ever taken part in one space battle. So it's really not an area where I'm super familiar with the game, but again, that should sort of speak to the difference between how Empire at War is approaching its galactic conquest versus tactical air against how Supremacy or Rebellion does, where could you imagine playing four hours in Empire at War never touching a single tactical battle? It just wouldn't happen. One of the more interesting elements of this, though, is just how much Rebellion did inspire Star Wars Empire at War. If you were to just look at the games on their surface, you may think, okay, well, they're both Star Wars strategy games, yes, there's a galaxy map versus tactical map, but that is something that you would probably come up with on your own if you were to look at it in a vacuum, not knowing that Rebellion existed before starting to work on Empire at War. But if you dig through a lot of the code in Star Wars Empire at War, you start to learn about a bunch of features that were planned for the game, but never made it to fruition by the time the game released. Empire at War, like a lot of games in that period around 2006, ended up getting rushed quite a bit and being subject to the removal of a bunch of features. If you look through the XML code, you can find remnants of things like political control that don't really impact the game as it is now, but was intended to play a much larger role in how you manage your faction on the galactic level. Even in the form that it came out in, many places did reference Empire at War as being a spiritual successor to Star Wars Rebellion. On the face of it, the time gap between Star Wars Rebellion in 1998 and Star Wars Empire War in 2006, along with the changes that happened in the game industry between those times, 
may seem like a huge jump, but if you actually think about it, the time between Empire at War and now is almost twice as long. And it would be hard to think of any game following up Empire at War as the kind of face of Star Wars strategy without implementing some of those features that people love from Empire at War. I think Empire at War and Star Wars Rebellion both keyed in on certain elements that people really love in Star Wars strategy and that are core to what you need to have to have a successful Star Wars strategy game, which really weren't picked up on by other places. You can look at, for example, Galactic Battlegrounds and Force Commander that were in some ways good games but really didn't have the same lasting impact that Star Wars Rebellion and Star Wars Empire at War had. I really enjoy Galactic Battlegrounds, it's something that I've played on the channel a few times and there's some active mods for it still, like expanding fronts that adds a bunch of content to the game, but at its core, the things that make it good are that it is a reskinned Age of Empires, which is one of the best real-time strategy games of all time, so there's a certain amount of just baseline quality that it has. And when you look at it, it's very clear that it's a reskinned Age of Empires, so while there is good stuff there, it's not something that you would point to as having a lot of what makes a good Star Wars game. Speaking of modding, which Disney and Petroglyph Games, the original developer of Star Wars Empire at War, have attributed to the ongoing success of Star Wars Empire at War, there was a pretty large modding scene dedicated to Star Wars Rebellion, especially when Rebellion Editor or Reb Ed was released. The network that actually hosts Empire at War Expanded is Star Wars Rebellion, one of the most popular places to go for Rebellion content and a place where you could go and download extra cards, which were the things that were exported by the Rebellion editor that other players could use to expand the content in the game. The site hosts a series of not just individual cards for additional content, including some from other universes like Stargate, but a series of total conversion mods and other kinds of content that I highly suggest going and looking at. I'll put a link in the description to Rebellion if you want to check that out for yourself, along with a link to the Discord server that they have recently made for the network. While I do think the game was hugely influential and has a lot of cool features in it, I can't necessarily recommend it for everyone. If you're more familiar with games like Stellaris, Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings, you may be more able to get into the interface and the kind of overwhelming amount of information that's there for you to handle, the 200 some odd page manual. But if you don't have much experience in that kind of game or if you're coming straight from Empire at War, there is a lot to learn very quickly and without much help. If you are able to get past the initial burden of knowledge, I do think there's a lot to have fun with though, so if you're willing to put in the time to get used to the mechanics and get past some of the even not great for the time graphics, I think there's a lot of fun to be had in the game. If you want to get an idea of what the game's like without having to go back and play it for yourself, it can be a bit finicky to get it running on modern systems as well, then it is something that I do plan to play a bit more on the channel in the future as well, so you can check that out here and watch someone who is terrible at the game lose immediately again. Either way, thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. Or if there's another topic you'd like to see me cover or a game on the channel, please leave that in the comments. I'm looking to get a bit more into some topical videos on the channel, not replacing the gameplay, but in addition to it. So that's going to be something that hopefully we'll get a bit more on the channel if you guys are enjoying. So thanks again, hope to see you next time.